Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros. And today we're gonna to be doing a quick and easy build guide. We have a PC here that we want to put together. Really no budget on this PC, but we wanna show you all at home a very quick video on how to build a gaming PC if you're building your first one. So let's not waste any more time and go ahead and hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by ASRock and their Z590 Phantom Gaming Velocita motherboard. This board comes with support for the latest 10th and 11th gen Intel processors, a beautiful design with RGB accents, PCI Gen 4 M.2 support with 11th gen processors, and a new patent pending graphics card holder to keep your card from sagging in your PC case. If you're looking to build a brand new Intel gaming rig, then you should look no further than this Z590 Phantom Gaming Velocita motherboard. To learn more, check the link in the description down below. And special thanks again to Azurog for sponsoring today's video. So two quick disclaimers before we get in. For one, this is going to be quick and easy, so about 10 minutes or so, and we're not gonna really go super in depth. There's a video on the main channel, there's two of them actually that we'll have somewhere. Um, so you can check those out if you want a more in depth guide. And also, if you wanna check out how to install drivers, how to install Windows, Toasty DIY or the YouTube channel. We've already done a couple of those videos and many more to come. So let's not waste any more time like we're wasting it right now and put this thing together. So the first thing we like to do, open up the motherboard. So now that we have the motherboard out of the box, we're gonna put it on top of the motherboard box because that's a really good surface to work on. And now we're just gonna go ahead and get our processor out. It's always a good first step to start on. So what we have here is the Ryzen 3600. It's on the AM4 platform. This is a B550 motherboard, which supports third gen on up. So this should work great for this build. Go ahead and take the processor out of the box. Make sure not to touch any of the pins. If you have Intel, you don't need to worry about that, but don't even touch the back of it because you don't want to get oils on it. We're going to line up these two arrows here. Very small arrow, very small arrow. It's really hard to tell. And then you're just going to drop it in place just like that. And then you're going to close the latch um, and it, it'll seat itself basically. It can't go anywhere now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put in our CPU cooler. You're always going to have a CPU cooler, but sometimes you might order an aftermarket one. We did not. We knew that our little good old Wraith Stealth Cooler would be enough to do this. Now we're gonna have to take these off. Uh, these are basically um, brackets in case you buy a cooler that can mount straight to these, which some do, but it's very rare. All right, let's put these off to the side. We're going to install it this way. AMD coolers are weird and you can't really get the logo to face the right way. Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, before we forget, I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in the CPU uh, header, so that's gonna go into this guy here. But now we're gonna go ahead and screw this in. You wanna do opposing corners. So as you can see, I'm doing uh, the two opposite sides first. The reason we do that is because if you screw in one side all the way first, it's gonna like shoot up. And it's gonna be really hard for you to screw it in. You might damage stuff. Rings, so we're gonna have to push a little harder. Harder! And we're just gonna kinda hide this cable down here like so. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the RAM. This is another really easy, kind of satisfying step. We have 16 gigs XPGs, 3000 megahertz, but you could go up to really 3600 if you wanted to, maybe even more. But this is just some good old A data RAM. So let's go ahead and pull both sticks out. I'm just gonna set one right here on the handy dandy motherboard. Um, we're going to be using, I guess we'll just use A1 and B1. Sure, why not? Mm -hmm. um, you wanna do, um, opposites, so if that makes sense, you'll, you'll see what I do here. We're gonna install one. Now with the RAM, it's not like the CPU. You do need to press it hard enough to where that latch closes itself. If you have to close the latch yourself, there's a good chance your RAM is not seated all the way and you're gonna have some issues. The computer will not uh, display anything out if your RAM's not seated all the way. Last step now that our RAM is installed, we're gonna go ahead and install the M.2. So most motherboards are gonna just use standard Phillips screws, but this one's really fancy and has all this stuff covered. Most motherboards are not gonna have these covers on the board. So you can see our M.2 is hiding under that little heat sink there. It does come with um, this tape over it to cover it. So make sure you take that off. So this is an M.2 NVMe SSD. This is the team group M.2 drive. And I think this one is a 512 gig. So there's a notch right here, a notch, a notch, and it can only go in one way. You kind of put it in at an angle and then it just sits there, but then you're gonna pull it down like so. We're basically just gonna put this back on just like we took it off. Oh, don't lose your screws like this. Yeah, don't lose your screws. And uh, yeah, once we get this last screw in, we have basically finished the motherboard. Uh, just to do a quick recap, we installed the CPU, we installed the cooler over top of it, we then installed the RAM, and then we installed the M.2 SSD. If you don't have an M.2 SSD, then you can just skip that step. So let's go ahead and uh, move on towards the case. 
All right, guys, we are now to the power supply and case section. I already removed both side panels because, well, we want to go ahead and use both sides when we're installing everything. And we're gonna start off with this power supply. This is the Ares Game 500 watt power supply. Um, this thing is, well, not modular. Um, if you guys don't know what modular is, well, watch that full build guide. But basically, all the cables are attached. You don't have to add extra cables or anything. Super easy to use. We're gonna throw that to the side and go ahead and install the power supply, which I will move. So what we're gonna do is fan side facing down for proper ventilation. We're gonna slide this power supply into the power supply basement, and then we're going to screw the power supply into the case by lining up the holes right here and screwing. All right, we are screwing in the last screw and voila, our power supply is nice and firm in there, ain't going anywhere. Um, now the next step normally uh, would be to install the motherboard. So what we're going to do is move all this stuff out of the way. We're going to lay the case down on its back and grab the motherboard. Now, normally, you if you have a lower end motherboard, you're gonna need to put in what is called the IO shield. And what you do is you pop in the little metal bracket, we'll try to have a picture on screen here, right here, and you do that. But this one's fancy. Again, it has a built-in IO shield, so it makes life a lot easier for us. We're gonna go ahead, line this motherboard up inside the case with the little gold standoffs are at the bottom. And then we're going to do our best to screw it in. Now, I probably should go ahead and show you guys real quick. That's what the screw looks like. Can Jackson zoom in on that real quick while it's spinning around? Fine thread motherboard screw, as we call it there, there we go. folks. I'm gonna take it. Okay, motherboard is installed. It is all good to go. Next step is to start running the power connectors. We're gonna go ahead and unbundle this mess right here. We'll worry about this in a minute. We'll just get the power connectors plugged in. So we'll unbundle this and we will pull out what looks to be the 24 pin connector. This is for the uh, motherboard, which now that I realize all the covers are, uh, okay. Well, so we're gonna have to use this right here. Uh, normally, if your mother, if you're in a different case, you actually have those cutouts closer to the 24 pin, but we're just gonna use this little hole right here. You'll see it on the other side once I flip this around. Uh, the CPU power, which is going to look like CPU power connector, it literally says CPU. There's normally a cutout right here. Go boop, like a so. And then GPU, I think this one has a basement cutout, does it? It does not, okay, never mind. Uh, this one, we're gonna have to run in a similar spot to the uh, 24 pin, probably like right here will work for now. So we'll go ahead and do this. We're gonna go over here and show you guys how to plug this stuff in. First up, 24 pin. 24 pin goes right here, cause you know what, it just makes sense. Blip, blop, and bloop. This is really hard to plug in. Yeah, it does require a decent amount of force. PCI power connector will wait there for the graphics card. CPU is all the way up here. Now, this motherboard actually has an extra eight pin slot because it just wants to be extra like that. Um, we'll still use it most of the time if you're using any sort of like lower end CPU, um, it really does not make a difference, but um, we're still gonna plug it in anyways. There you go, all plugged in, looking nice and schnazzy. Not really, that looks awful actually. We'll deal with the cable <laughs> management later, but uh, yeah, there you go, there's that. Uh -huh. Uh, but the main power connector is actually plugged in now, minus the GPU power. So what we're gonna do is switch back around and go ahead and run the other connectors. We have what we call USB 3 for the USB 3 connectors up here. All right, running next to the 24, Jackson said, and we'll do it. Sometimes you listen to Jackson, sometimes, sometimes you don't. You just gotta trust me. All right, two other things here. This is HD audio, which I don't think, actually, yes, I can run it through this little little slot right here. Normally, I know it's hard to see, uh, there is a little slot that is normally on top of the power supply. Um, I'm gonna try to run it through here the best I can and then try to pull it out on the other side. Is it in there? Yes. All right, it's in there, there we go. And then this is your front panel connector, which is always fun to show on camera. And I think there's another one right here. I assume front panel is in this little spot. Push that through there and we'll show you on the other side what it looks like. And look at all the cables we pushed through. They're ready to go. This thing is really far through. <laughs> we'll go ahead and send this back. He gave himself 10 feet. There's USB 3 right there. We're gonna go ahead and do this. Uh, USB 3 is in. We'll find out if that works later. Um, and then down here we have what we like to call HD audio. HD audio, you normally just look at the pins right here. You see there's no open slot here. Line it up with the one on the board. Normally HD audio is on the far left of the motherboard. That's a pretty traditional location. Boop. And then right here, front panel connector. Now, see right here, the front panel is actually there. I don't know if Jackson can actually see that or if it's bright <laughs> enough. You might need to up that ISO a little bit there, but I'll have McAllister put a picture on screen here that I will take uh, so you guys can see what we're looking at here. But basically, you're just plugging in each of these individual connectors. One is power LED, hardware LED, and power switch. So. You see that? Look at that, look beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That's plugged in, no other connectors really. At this point, everything is plugged up. 
Um, we just need to put in the graphics card, I guess, because cable management is not going to be a part of this tutorial. If you want to watch cable management, go take a look at the other tutorial, uh, the full guide one. But what we're going to do is just go ahead and slap the graphics card in, and then at the end, you'll see what our final result looks like after some cable management. And here's our graphics card, the beautiful 1660 from Zotac. What we're going to go ahead and do is install it in this slot right here. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and untighten, untighten, loosen, whatever you want to call it. This is pretty tight, so we're going to use a screwdriver. This little PCI bracket cover here, which will slide out. Out. And then what we're gonna do is go ahead and line up our graphics card and see which of these slots we need to pop out. And it does look like it is going to be the um, these two right here. And of course, this one here that's already screwed in, it's just gonna stay there. Unfortunately, with this being a cheaper case, it does have these break off pins, which seems to be hitting this like shield right here, which isn't that bad. It's better than it scraping the motherboard. So we're just gonna kind of wiggle back and forth, back and forth, and then it'll break off. Look at that, brute force method, I like it. Ah, there you go, look at that, beautiful. And now we're going to slot the graphics card in line it up with that slot right there, and you're gonna push kind of firmly, and then you'll hear a click. Just like everything else, like RAM, it'll just click. Boom, look at that. That was very satisfying, actually. Mm -hmm. We're going go ahead and screw in both of these little parts right here where this bracket goes onto the PCI slot. So we're gonna go ahead and do this, like a so. And boom, we're gonna slide this back, lock it back into place. And then you can see this right here. This is the power required for the graphics card. That's what we fed through here. We're gonna go ahead and take this, which is an eight pin connector, plug her up, and then during the cable management phase, we'll probably just tie this off right here, pull the cables back and make things look nice and clean. But in theory, this PC should work as is. We're not missing anything else. It should power on, it should be ready to go. Uh, let's go ahead and finish it up so you guys can see the final result with a little bit of cable management. All right, so here is basically the finished product. We don't have the side panels on, but this is exactly how we'd finish a PC. Uh, we cable manage it for the most part. It's not perfect, but uh, we're just kind of going for a clean look. We just kind of ran everything together. And this is about, uh, about as good as you really need to have it. Um, and then we just kind of have, you can see all the other stuff in the basement there. But the PC seems to be functioning. It's not boot looping when we turned it on, so should be good to go. So let's go ahead and wrap this video to make sure that we keep it short. All right, guys, PC is built, and to our knowledge, functioning well. We won't know until we actually get hooked up to a monitor, but it hasn't boot looped, hasn't turned off or anything, and it seems good. Once again, the price of this PC is totally irrelevant. We actually didn't really even add it up, but if you do want to purchase any stuff from this build, just to shout out the companies, link in the description down below. They are affiliate links and do help us out, and hopefully this guide was useful for your next PC build. If you guys haven't already, don't forget to check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. In case any of you scrub lords did not know, we have our own merch on teespring.com slash toasty bros. Go out in public, rep the toasty bros, be a real fan. Link in the description down below. See you guys in the next one. Goodbye.